Welcome back. Uh, I am uh, Julian. Um, um, right now I'm working, at, and I'm doing my PhD at the Lithia lab. Um, and we're working on a, on a tool, on a, well, more, I would say more uh, an approach for uh, automatically planning usability smells, we call it smells, bear with me here, we, I will explain that later. But, yeah, we want to find usability issues or problems, specifically on web applications, okay? That's our, our field right now. And why usability? Well, I think we, we have all uh, found our usability nemesis. Uh, it's really frustrating. It's something that everyone uh, finds some uh, really lousy usability uh, every now and then. Uh, well, to me, it is by, sadly, it's my home banking system. Just to cite an example, and it's really frustrating. Uh, just the other day, they changed some stuff, and they added some buttons, and now I don't know what they do anymore. Uh, it's the same uh, crappy system, but with uh, less description. And this is just one, one simple example. I'm sure you all have your, your own nemesis. Yes, I see people <laughs> saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. this is the same one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, this is... The same account. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, if you're going to use my car, please email me before, okay? <laughs> Uh, no, really, this is, uh, uh, we, uh, what's the first uh, thing you ask yourselves when you see this kind of things? Uh, why? <laughs> why? Why do you do that? This is, well, maybe there's an explanation. Yeah. N not for them, they have no excuse, but uh, m most developers or some developers uh, or small companies, one would, would think, well, maybe they just don't have the, the, the resources. Maybe, maybe you don't have enough people for, for testing usability. You don't have experts. You don't have uh, volunteers. Okay, well, that's not true. Uh, and don't take my word for it. Just listen to this guy. He knows about usability. Uh, and he says, well, the best results come from testing no more than five users and running as many small tests as you can afford. As you can afford, so if you can afford just one test without users, that will do. And you won't find, you won't be a usability nemesis <laughs> then. It just, uh, so it's quite cheap. If you don't have, just use three. But, uh, or just call your, grand, your grandmother or your mother and have them use your application. Uh, just once. Sometimes you feel they don't, they don't even do that. Okay? Um, well, so we're kind of lost. <laughs> uh, in this scenario, we wanted to help small companies or those who have, don't have budget or don't have a, the will <laughs> to improve their usability. So we said, well, what's the best way to do this? We want automatic usability. So can we assess usability automatically? Can we do it without effort? Well, the answer is no, but <laughs> uh, a, a best answer is, a better answer would be, where to some extent you can. And that's, and that's great because if, if, if you can offer some assessment, some usability assessment just for free or with no effort, zero effort or one tiny bit of effort, then, well, you could at least improve some of the sites, some of the web applications you, you are so worried about. All right? So when we started with this, we said, well, what's the best way to do this? OK, we can offer a service. So we can use, if you don't have volunteers, well, use your real users. OK? I know this. Um, many of you will have concerns about this, but I, I will extend on that. So we can use logs. We can log your users' activity. And then search. So, okay, okay. 
search through those logs and find at least some of the issues. Um, we found out this is a, a nice approach because if you search through logs, then you will find the first issues you will find will be those that people uh, run into the most. Okay. Uh, well, so this this was the, the general idea, and uh, we said, okay, we can offer usability as a service, just like you have uh, Google Analytics. Well, you can offer a usability service, right? Uh, some of you might know some services just like this that tell you or give you heat maps, tell you where users are clicking or where users are scrolling, but then you need uh, someone to I interpret those that, that data to, to understand and to reason on that and tell you what your next step is, okay? So we don't even want that. So we want you to have some insight completely for free. So how do you do that? Okay, we got our logs, which is... So before uh, saying too much, I will show you a quick demo. Uh, you know wh wh why this, this, this is the picture for the demo, because it will surely crash. <laughs> okay. So, this is my website. My website, my test website. See, there's no content, so don't, don't try to, to read any of that. Um, and I'm going to show you how, how this is logging what users do, but I, I won't log everything. I won't, I just, I mean, we tried doing that. We tried logging every single event, but it was just too much. We just, events were stacking up, and in two or three days, we have eight gigabytes of events. Um, okay, you can use those, but not, for, not in a real production website with real users, with medium traffic. So we kind of did a, we did a, a client-sided tool. This is uh, not small talk, so don't, don't worry just yet. It's a JavaScript tool that runs on the client and selects the event and also adds some abstraction on the event. What, what do I mean with that? For example, instead of logging every single keystroke I make, it logs me, you see, it's logging all the text uh, input event, and it knows some additional stuff like uh, whether it was a correction over all text, whether uh, how, how much time did I spend typing, um, did I use copy and paste, uh, some tiny bits of information that will help me later. So I call this little events, threats, uh, because they might be, they, they are potentially dangerous for usability, okay? Now we're trying to change this to usability event, it's less biased, but okay, so where does this go? Yay, here it is, so this is, well, Syncom small token, you might know it. And this here is my my client. We uh, there's I will show the front later, but someone registered to my logger, <laughs> and now I have this client there. And uh, this last thread is this input. All right. So well, here it is. It travels safely to to my image, and um, I have many many of those threads. Well, not so many there, like about 20. Uh, but interesting, uh, some interesting things are form submissions, uh, text completions, scrolling events, when I scroll too fast. Just like that. Well, yeah. Uh, it knows you've scrolled way too fast for, uh, to, to understand what the content is or to even read. So those are little, uh, tiny events I'm logging for further analysis. And the good thing about this is that they don't pile up so <laughs> so quickly. So that's an extra. I use the client uh, 
power of uh, computing for uh, in my favor, and it doesn't uh, bother <laughs> really. That you cannot notice it's running. Um, we tested them on real sites, so believe me. Uh, well, so I could keep on showing you what's happening on the image, but I'm going to show you the uh, front end. All right? Uh, this is not published yet, but once it's polished, I will publish and give you all the URL so you can try it. Uh, so you can register here. I have already registered my clients, so that will be quicker. I just got to log in. And here's the explosion. <laughs> All right. Oh, here we are. So as, as soon as you register, you will get a snippet. Uh, all you have to do is just paste this on your image header. Don't try to read that. It's just one JavaScript loading. And this is a token, so we can authenticate it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, this is where you see what, what's happened, all right? All these little things are, 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 are the, the logs. Uh, they're just here for debugging purposes. Um, and also, I, I use them to export them from one image to the other while I'm developing this because it's constantly adjusting. And, well... Let me show you some examples of what I do with this information. Uh, well, here's one. Remember that those scrollers, quick scrollings? Well, here's what we call a, a usability smell, right? Uh, I'm telling you, okay, you, people usually scroll down to this point at this URL and don't even look what's up or down depending on the on the direction. That's not very interesting. Uh, let's see another one. For example, oh, check this out. If I click on something that that doesn't react to certain elements, then I can detect an uh, unresponsive element. And it will also show you what the element is, and when it's able to do so, it can also show you this is not a screenshot, this is a real live view of the, so you can try it out. Um, well, there are others, uh, uh, things for example, it knows where the, if you have a form that keeps coming back after you submit, then what, it understands that you have, uh, that, that hasn't succeeded, so it tells you, okay, this is, uh, failing to submit, and if it uh, exceeds some threshold, for example, if over 40% of uh, submissions fail, then it, it tells you, okay, this, there's something wrong with this form. You, it's up to you what, 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 what you do, but, well, I exaggerated with this, but 84% of the time the form's failing. That's not very unrealistic, anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so we have many uh, problems that we can detect just on the user activity and, the, and, and, and the, the good part is that you don't really have to do anything um, other than taking action o over the issues that your website is showing. Okay. Uh, so it didn't crash so badly. <laughs> yes, it's like... <laughs> but no, really, we, we tried this on, on two not very, very, very uh, popular sites. But, well, one of them was uh, a, a football uh, uh, or soccer <laughs> football team uh, uh, merchandise site which, from the city I come from, which is La Plata. So it's quite visited. Uh, it didn't break as, as bad. <laughs> well, of course, the, 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 there are other problems, <laughs> a lot of problems that we show you later. But those, these are some things we can uh, we can detect. Uh, annoying forms in any way 
Uh, oh, this is the, the last thing we, we checked. We saw some <laughs> Nielsen top 10 mistakes, and we saw that search uh, is rather bad in, in many sites. So we have a, a thread that detects when you are searching for something. Oh, let me show you. Something. And, well, here, here it is. Search with no results. Uh, it's a very, very simple algorithm, uh, but we're improving on it, and it's, and it's one of the top mistakes from uh, usability mistakes on websites. Uh, we also detect slow requests when, for example, a form takes too long, and they don't show you a, a loading uh, uh, a sign or whatever. Uh, when, when, when you don't have default values and you force people to, to, to fill in values, when you ah, force bulk action, when well, you need to check on a single item every time instead of, uh, for example, you want to delete an email and you have a list of emails and they have these check boxes so you can delete many emails at once, but you never do that. You just want to delete one. And, this is <laughs> rather specific, but it's very common. Uh, lack of auto-completion. Uh, people type all the time the same values. Uh, you, you should assist them because it's clearly something that's between in, in a limited range. Uh, well, over the content. So, and if you can think of any new ones, please tell me so, and I, may, I might be able to code it before the conference ends. So, to show the power of of the framework, so to speak. Um, okay, so some challenges we found during uh, the development. We found out we needed to detect uh, similarity between DOM elements. Uh, for example, if you have an issue with one of these menu elements, well, maybe you have an issue with all of them. Uh, we don't want to uh, tell you there's a, a problem with this one, this one, this one, and this one. Or imagine you have a list of products. Uh, it's, it's, there are infinite combinations. So we, uh, we developed a way to understand when two elements come from the same, same template. All right? So we just show you the problem once. We tell you there's a problem with your product widget. All right? So that got a, a little expensive in computing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is created by... Uh, Another teammate of mine, Martin Sanotti, who's working on this, which is a, an issue in itself. So doing this got a little, okay, uh, uh, brought a lot of overhead. So we started working on how to cache the, the, the problems we find so you don't have to reprocess them. So there has been a lot of challenges. Uh, also, we don't want you to configure the parameters, the threshold for every uh, type of problem we can find. So we want to, based on the traffic of the site, how many how many people must run into a problem in order for we to detect it and show it to you. So we want, because again, we want, we want this to be as automatic as possible. Um, well, there are many drawbacks to this. Uh, we don't know the context. We, we don't know what users are doing, actually. We can infer some things, but we don't really, we, we are not in a laboratory, we don't, we don't tell yourself, okay, now do that, and I will see how, how you perform. So, we have no context, so that uh, narrows down the kind of problem we can find. Uh, we could do that, or we could uh, link all the, the issues to, to the same user, but then we will have a privacy issue. So, uh, for example, of course, we don't log any passwords, <laughs> so <laughs> rest. <laughs> uh, but also, if you log everything a user does and you know it's the same person, then it's very easy to detect uh, or to track him down or to offer advertising or whatever. <laughs> we, we won't do that. So. Do you log the answer to private questions? That's the corner of your Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... We devise this in a way that we cannot uh, <laughs> even rearrange the event, so we cannot tell uh, who did what. We just have the event separately, 
and they're all mixed up, and we work with that. So, so that's the way we took. Maybe we find a better way of getting some of this without compromising this. But as for now, we are uh, we are with this. <laughs> um, of course, this is incomplete. We will never replace uh, an expert. But again, we wanted to give you some something for free and something not not free as in, uh, in money, but uh, uh, effort free. All right. So, but hey, <laughs> it's fully automated. So it's unattended. Uh, we we want to we want to work on that. Okay. We don't want to compromise that. And. And another good thing is that it will detect the popular issues, issues first because uh, you are not telling the user what to do. They just go and do because they're real users. Um, and it's very easy to extend. Well, you know why. <laughs> OK? <laughs> um, all right, now, what we want, where are we going with this? This is only the first stage of a full process that is automated all the way. <laughs> What does it mean? We first want to detect usability issues. The second step of this, uh, of this project is to suggest solutions. Because we have a lot of information. We have the DOM elements. And we know what the solution for many of these problems are. So we can, along with the problem, we can show you or hint you uh, in, uh, into a solution or many. And the third step, as you probably have figured out by now, is to solve them. <laughs> so ideally, you just leave your JavaScript <laughs> running on your site. And when you, once you come back one month later, then it's better. <laughs> uh, we have, this is not so, so this is, it's not a fantasy. We, ha we have already uh, cor successfully corrected some mistakes on the client. Um, Ma of course, manually. But we can get there, and we will. <laughs> Why not? So of, of course, uh, the, the kind of problems we can solve automatically will be uh, less than those we can report. Uh, ah, and when we have many problems, we will do A-B testing to automatically de de determine what's the best one. But that's even farther. <laughs> uh, so this is the first step of a very long project. I hope you. OK, I, I forgot many things, but I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have <laughs> questions, thank you. OK, we have five minutes for questions. So I hope you, <laughs> you have at least one. How do you try it? How, how do we try it? Yeah, yeah well, it, we just installed it in two applications. Uh, that are fairly visited. There's a uh, uh, travel agency and this uh, merchandise uh, website for Gimnasia de Jirima Plata. I don't know if you... <laughs> and, uh, well, it, the, the first test gave was quite low on accuracy. Uh, it, I mean, it detected many problems, many issues that we knew that were there. So that was very satisfying. But it also detected many... Uh, issues that weren't there, <laughs> it weren't really issues. No, so. but I mean, uh, you're going to announce so people can try it out for themselves, oh. for our sites and stuff, or? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, well, well, when it's ready, I will, I don't know, just contact me and I will send you the, the URL. You can, uh, it would be great <laughs> for me. Yes. Will you show, like, the live preview? Mm -hmm. Yes. But actually, you say that it was an live preview. Yes, it was. What do you mean by live preview? I mean, it's not a remote view of that, but it's like, like it's a recreate. No, it's an iframe. That, that's, uh, uh, yeah, there's a window on an iframe. Yes. So, yes, that's right. And then the next question is what happens if that <laughs> yeah. is inside of a station based? Uh, then you can't show it. <laughs> no, uh, we were trying to do uh, something that you, you give, since you are the, the site owner, uh, to, uh, we were thinking of providing you a way to log in before you, before you see the results. So the, if, uh, I, I haven't really uh, got around that <laughs> just yet. 
not with not with yeah, but not with pure JavaScript. Uh, I found that not not fully yeah yes. It's tricky. Uh, if, if you have <laughs> a way to do it, please tell me so. But, uh, also, that that was one of the things we left for later, but that's very valuable. <laughs> Okay, questions? Thank you. Thank you.